finally started working on the chairs today and I've already finished one of the bases and I would say that the base of this chair is probably the most complex part of the build because there's a little bit of mill work milling this groove in here for the back support there's an angle that needs to be cut and also a notch that gets cut out and this is going to be for the seat support a couple of people were wondering how the seat will be supported well I'll get into that but the first step is to cut this notch out so now that I've got one of the bases done and I've figured everything out I'm ready to move on to the next one I'll start out with a solid block of zebra wood that measures an inch and three quarters by 17 and a half inches high by 13 and three quarter inches wide to help eliminate any confusion while I'm milling the board I'll use a piece of painters tape and then label it front top the measurement for my groove is nine and three quarters of an inch to seven inches. So I've cut two boards, one for the top that measures nine and three quarters and I've written the word top and I'll mark a line. And then here at the bottom, I've cut another piece of scrap wood at seven inches and I'll mark a line. And then I'll use my router fence to connect those lines and cut the groove. I've got my router fence clamped to the workpiece and I'll use a three quarter inch straight bit to cut the groove. So now I've got my first groove cut, I'm going to flip the board over and cut the groove in the other side of the base. And this is where it's helpful to have notes because it's easy to get confused when you're working on two different uh, sides of the board and if I were to make a mistake and cut the groove in the wrong direction then I'd have to start all over again. So I've got front top written on the piece of tape right here. I've got my measurement board of nine and three quarters and I'll use this to make my mark. I've got my seven inch with the word bottom written on it. And I'll use this to make my next mark, mark lines and set the fence. The next step is to cut this angle on the back of the chair and for that I'll measure in an inch and three quarters on the back top, mark a line and then draw a straight edge from that line to zero at the bottom. I'll make this cut with the bandsaw. Then I'll use the joiner to clean up the blade marks. I've raised a blade on my table saw to an inch and a quarter and I'll use the cross cut sled to cut the notch out for the seat support. I ended the day yesterday by joining a few boards together to build the backs of the chairs and I'll go over how to do that in a little while when I build the seats of the chairs but I wanted to get the backs built last night so I could come in this morning unclamp them and start to fit the backs to the bases. After I unclamped the walnut backs, I cut them to size just about a half an inch heavy so I have some room to work with. And then I ran them through the sander a few times because they were just a little bit heavy for this three quarter inch groove. And the next step is to cut 
a board out of the center that's going to measure an inch and an eighth because that's the space between the two grooves on the base here and then I'll cut the bottom part out and then rejoin the boards. These are the three boards that will now make up the back of the chair. I've got the two sides and the filler piece in the middle. And the next step is to cut the sides to length and I need to cut uh, just about an eight degree angle at the bottom of each side. And it's just a little bit heavier than an eight degree angle. But this can get a little confusing so I've written a note on the top of each board that this side goes against the fence and this side is down because I want to make sure that I don't cut the angles on the wrong side of the board. When I cut the filler strip out of the back of the chair, I cut it a little bit heavy with the idea that it's better to have it a little bit heavy and be able to trim it down than to have it too light and then not be able to fit the back over the base. This space right here for the filler strip measures an inch and an eighth, but I'm going to cut the filler strip just a little bit heavy, maybe a 32nd of an inch heavy, so I don't have a problem when I go to assemble the chair. Now I'll hold the filler strip flush with the top of the back and mark a line at the seat's base. I still have the miter saw set to the 8 degree angle, so I'll bring the filler strip back to the saw and make the cut. Now I'll use the biscuit joiner again to rejoin the boards, making sure that the boards are flush at the top. Well, it's a new day and I'm building the seats for the chairs and I'm building the seats and I've built the backs all out of S4S Walnut and S4S stands for surfaced on four sides and I'm sure a lot of the hardcore woodworkers out there might cringe at the idea of using Walnut S4S and the reason for that is you're, you're paying for less material than you would get if you were to buy your material in random widths but I feel like I'm saving time in the milling process and so time is money so that's uh, the way I wanted to go and because I wanted to work with three quarter inch material this is perfect for this project so the seats are going to be 16 and three quarters by just about 16 and a half so I'm going to build the seats a little bit heavy and then I'll cut them down the size I'm using the same method to glue the seats up as I did to glue the backs up using a biscuit joiner. And just a quick tip when you're gluing something up using a bar clamp, put a little tape on the bar because if you don't, where the wood hits the wet glue and the bar, you'll get a dark black stain that will be very hard to sand out.
Well, I just finished gluing up the top and getting rid of all the glue, but I thought I should go through the steps. I used these blocks here to raise the clamp up. That way the bar clamp wasn't in the glue and I was able to clean underneath the bar. The clamps that I had on the side were to bring the boards level with one another and once they were level and the clamps were tightened, I could remove the bars and then again clean up any excess glue. Now when every year clamping something up, working with wet glue, that is probably one of the most important things in a project, you have to plan for it, you have to work fast, and you can't be interrupted. So if you get a phone call, uh, you just have to get off, get your glue up done, clean up all of your glue, that's real important too. I always say that, I'm like a broken record. Get rid of any wet glue, and all of these things may take a little time, but in the long run, they'll save you a lot of time. So now with the seats glued up, I can move on to making the seat supports. I'll make the support out of zebra wood, and I'll rip it a little bit heavy with the table saw and then run it through the sander a few times until I have a nice tight fit in the notch. I ran the support through the sander a few times and now I've got a, a really nice snug fit. And then I used a cutoff from the support to find the height of the blade for this notch. And now I'll use the table saw sled to cut the notch out in both supports. Well, it's a nice tight fit, but it's still a little bit heavy and not quite flush with the top. But rather than trying to remove a little bit more material from the notch, I'll just rip this off with the table saw. I think I might shape the supports a little bit just to soften them up, but I'm really not sure what I want to do yet, so I'm going to assemble the chair. Uh, I'll have to cut the seats first, but once I can see the chair put together, then I'll know what I want to do with these supports. I had to run out yesterday afternoon, so I called it a day pretty early. But I've come in this morning, I've sanded the back, I've sanded the seat, I cut the seat down to size, and the cutoff from the seats I'll use for frame, so it's really not waste. And I was thinking that I might want to shape the seat support, just round it over a little bit or something, but I decided I'm going to keep it just the way it is. So the next step is to cut the angle on the back of the seat. And I know it's just about 8 degrees, but I'll run a few test pieces on the table saw first before I make the cut. I set the blade for just a little bit heavier than 8 degrees, and it turns out that that was right on, so now I'm ready to make the cut. Okay, well, the chairs are built, but they're definitely a long way off from being finished. And I would say that each chair is going to need maybe five or six full hours of sanding before I start to think about how I'm going to do the glue up. And I still need to figure out exactly how I'm going to attach the seat to the seat brace 
And as far as the seat to the back, I think I'm going to screw through the back and into the seat and then fill the screw holes with walnut plugs. Uh, I'll definitely do a, a follow-up video on this project and I'll go over all of the sanding steps and what I'm going to use for a finish. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for tuning in.